Hello and welcome back to Railroads Online. So today we have picked up a new locomotive and are going to run it through its first load. We uh, numbered this one 6,000. It is a class 70 big fat smokestack on this one. We named it the A. Carnegie. It is Ant Inc. Ironworks. Effectively this one is going to be running iron out to the iron works is where this one's going um, we need something to get some full loads out of the um, smelter valley and I did not want to um, the only other one I have that's capable of doing it is I have a setup um, similar to this while well, I have a Heisler on 10 um, spike cars out there at the coal mine but where that is way out you know the coal mines way out there so we have the two trains out at the coal mine one's a Heisler one's a class 70 one's got hoppers and one's identical to this load but it's kind of always a really long pain in the butt to go out there and get it so I just brought in this load um, from Woody. That's usually hauling wood out to the refinery or the uh, oil field. And I just swapped it out with a new locomotive with a new Class 70. So we did pick up a new locomotive, but the Class 70 is still being the big workhorse in the fleet. That's what we went with. What's up with that? with the triangle inside the triangle on the light see it two triangle that's weird. that's awkward huh not sure what that is but uh, so that's what we did again we named it uh, Carnegie steel mogul obviously we um, yeah, this is about as close to steel as we get. We do have the steel pipe, but, you know, whatever. So, there you go. Class 70 gets the job done. That's what I know. Um, I didn't want to really be messing around too much with uh, having problems coming up the hill out of the smelter. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to run with a load, so... You know, here it is. We're going to find out. Head on down the hill, go grab some iron, and see how that runs out to the ironworks. Is going to be the idea. Takes too much um, time. Again, that's, a, that's an uphill run and a long way to go, so we definitely didn't want to do it with um, partial loads or smaller locomotives, smaller... Um, smaller trains wait a minute are we going well it wouldn't have mattered I could have gone this way I should have gone that way well whatever we'll see how it does on a turn although this track did get smoothed out a bunch but whatever can it I do notice that this the UI on these is just it's stickier and stuff than it was it's just all there is to it and the rendering distance is a bit weird we have a little you know weird things going on still haven't gotten an update to smooth out any of that stuff uh, hopefully that's coming some other bugs have been pointed out with some uh, purchasing a locomotives that you can absolutely crash the game and um, that's obviously a bug. There's some skippy, you know, whatever. It's not even frame rate lo like loss. We've all talked about, or a bunch of us have talked about. Some people really are having frame rate problems. Some people, it's just like a graphics bounce glitch. It's not frame rate. You know, you can watch the numbers on the frame rates and you're doing just fine frame rate wise. It's just that something's bouncy and not, you know, this. It's not the way you it used to run smooth like, and it's just not that way. And um, 
you know, it's causing a lot of major disappointment, to be honest, right now for a lot of people because they're just playing ha having performance issues with the beta. So definitely hoping that they're working on a bug fix there. I am right on board with hoping that that gets looked at soon. Uh, it's kind of disappointing. Multiplayer performance, again, hasn't been great. That's been a bit sketch as of late. For sure. Um, haven't really planned, still made an idea, what, or, you know, or formulated a plan is really what I'm looking for here about what to do with the track, whether it's time to start a new layout or, um, I don't know. Definitely not going to get rid of this track. Um, but we really have started smoothing out a lot of the bugs and the issues that I had with the stuff in the track. Uh, did some work out on the uh, rail that heads out to the ironworks, which we'll see that on the way out there. Um, smoothed out some of the doubles in there. Still have a little bit of work. I want to change a few angles here and there, make things look a little better. Not saying this layout is perfect in any stretch of the word. We definitely have things we could go back, fix, and lay out better and smoother. Um, but I just don't know how much there is really to all that, you know. I would maybe like to cap off all of the industries first. But I think I'll be doing that in some, uh, maybe doing that in multiplayer sessions or something like that. Or we can really load uh, locomotives faster and just really, you know, haul the freight, you know, and get it done. It, uh can go much faster that way maybe will be the idea I know we've had some people looking to um, help run loads and are happy to come help run some loads so I think we'll be doing that a little more often as this one goes and maybe see if we can get everything full I do think it'd be nice to have like a rail tour uh, once all of the industries are absolutely full and maybe then we call this one um, you know, on hold, start calling it the senior save file or something and move on to a new um, layout. This game, you know, you're only done when you want to be done and you can restart whenever you want to restart. So, no real finish line unless you set one for yourself. And I guess I haven't even decided that I'm getting ready to the finish line with this one I would still like to double this rail I guess and I would still like to double the rail out to the coal mine uh, that would be an interesting one to double working up that hill although I do think I would probably just still single rail up the hill but at least double the run up the valley so that you know if you had two trains running side by or two trains coming head to head they wouldn't have to sit for forever you'd at least have some sidings in there so that's definitely a possibility coming up, or at least maybe just putting in some sidings on that run. Um, I could definitely see maybe doing something like that. This I've considered doubling through here. Or at least maybe just putting in a, a siding here as well. Something so at least if you're, you know, you can avoid the whole head-to-head -head and a locomotive having to sit at a switch for forever. if we're really going to try to blitz at filling up the industries on here. So that may be what is up and coming is a industry top off attempt that really takes some loads, but then we have everything up to where, you know, we can get pretty good sized loads on most of the industries. All right. Which way do we got to go? Actually, that's fine. That's totally fine. I'm going to run down here since we're already off the locomotive and go see, what is that? Oh, oh wow, that, tell me that didn't almost look like a person there, that would, that, wow, almost looked like a person off it. <laughs> this, this tree, that was something, I'm like, wait, what, who's that? <laughs> 
pretty sure we're not open like that right now. All right, flip that switch. That's going to send us down into the valley. That one's good. It would auto switch back anyway. It's kind of one of the hub junctions. The, I don't know, call it Smelter Valley Junction if you want to, right? So we are going to make a smelter run for the iron. Pretty sure, what are they? Iron rails? What do you got down there? Iron beams and iron rails. We need the big ones for this. Pretty sure those are iron beams. Now that I think about it. Definitely need them. We're totally out of steel pipe out there at the refinery, so we can't really do much until we actually get the uh, steel pipe roll it out again we have a shortage in the program but I know it was what did I have I had uh, steel pipe ran out and part of that was because it ran out of uh, coal and then I tried filling it up with coal and I ran the coal ran out so we got to get um, iron up that direction too. And I know that currently the refinery can't do anything because it has no steel pipe. So we're going to kind of just backfill from here, I guess, and start looking at uh, moving along what we do have to its more further end stage and seeing how much we can push, you know, the oil over to the refinery and get things staged for barrels see if we can get that all filled up and then just start coming back from there and filling things in i guess is kind of going to be my goal and start really working towards filling everything up just how many loads how many loads can run at a time it's you know up for debate been pretty busy lately so it's not like i've had you know, it's one thing when you can turn around and burn a whole day playing and you can spend eight or ten hours playing. You can really get some stuff done, no doubt about it. But, you know, those days are a little fewer and far between sometimes. Just what it is. Here we go with a good shot down to the smelter. And the trees, I have noticed that every once in a while, like, you can catch these sets of trees where there are just big strips that you can see down that are actually open. And that's not, like, because they were cut. That's just kind of how they spawn in. So, it's kind of weird. The old pine trees never, you never really got that. The old pine trees, you pretty much just couldn't see through at all. And I do have to say, I do like this, where you can actually, you can actually th see through some areas of the trees because I mean you know you've been anywhere near the trees that's real they're not always like solid thick that was always one complaint I had with the uh, pine trees and I still say that they can pull out you know a third of the trees in this game and nobody is gonna say it's not a thick forest because it's just over planted to be quite honest I mean Yes, there's forests like this, but it's not needed in the game. And I have to assume that all, you know, I know it's the same tree repetitively in the game, but there's still a lot of points of interest for the computer. That's all I'm saying. And I got to assume if it had maybe some less trees to have to deal with and render, that the game wouldn't just be a little smoother. Um, it's just a lot. And I could totally be wrong. I freely admit that, but uh, that's just my thinking. Let's see if we can zoom back here a little bit, get a good look at the bridge. Nice size train attached to this one. You know, I've always liked the 10 car trains. To me, that's long enough without uh, being a super hassle to load, but um, long enough also to get a good train kind of look. 
uh, by the time you start looking back there, it's far enough. I've definitely seen longer trains. I run longer trains. I have, um, on a routine basis, I have the one that's 16, but it is, it's a headache to run, you know? That's just how I like it. When you're solo, uh, multiplayer, not so bad, but when you're solo, I just think 10 cars is, that's my limit anyway. That's plenty. And it generally tends to round out most of the drop-offs here. You can see the spot. We have not come in and fixed that. Um, I don't really intend on fixing those until we get a way to really fix those. Although, I guess the way to do it now is to lay the groundwork without a switch. That way you can set it at an angle. And then lay your, um, lay your switch on top. I don't know if we can actually, can we get this thing stopped? I guess so. Let's go flip the switch, that way we actually go into the smelter from the right, from the front. Oh, over. You know, when they first put in the whole left, left click, right click, I was pretty happy with it. But now, it's kind of a pain in the butt, because sometimes you don't really know which one it wants you to do. And so now it seems like what used to be one button push and a drag is sometimes two or three button pushes and a drag, even though you shouldn't need a drag. So I don't know. There's the switch is a bit funny. I'll say that or finicky. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only person that experiences that. And I'm sure there's a correct left or right click based on which direction you're looking at the switch and yada 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 but you know whatever I don't know what it is and I play a lot so that's all I'm saying <laughs> here is our cordwood drop off for those who have wondered asked I mean they're definitely in other videos Currently, they look a little ugly from cutting the tracks off because this is the old track. Um, that's the only old track really left in this save file, I gotta say. So that's all there. I don't know if I ever intend on cleaning that up, deleting it. I may just try to see if I can delete the groundwork and the track and see if it'll still work. In which case... You know, I won't really do much with it. Um, if it doesn't work, then I'd probably go in and, I don't know, I'd probably just get rid of the cars and relay some sort of something in there, I guess. But, deal with that when I get there. Still not there. I do like how the drop-off is just straight, so I don't really want to lose the cars and whatnot down there. Because I really don't enjoy shunting locomotives. Not my favorite thing to do. I find it too time consuming. So I do like the drive through drops whenever possible. That's just the truth. I don't know. Got a lot of loads to run. And loading locomotives and everything else is a big enough pain, I guess, in my opinion. Or a slow enough process that, you know, anything I can do to make it go faster is preferred go off brake see it's like that like there there's no reason why the brake didn't come off it just didn't come off it's sticky you uh all right brakes see again brakes thank you now that we're too far all right well here's what i'll do i'm gonna get this locomotive loaded up and i will be right back with you all right thanks to youtube magic there we are the train is loaded 10 flat cars not flat cars spike cars whatever you want to call them tier two cars loaded with iron beams on its way express to the iron works so here we go Let's see where we're at we still have fuel so the water temperature that which has always been whatever 110 it's apparently celsius i don't know i know these numbers were messing with me so much uh, when I was doing a video the other day that I was like, I talked myself into thinking everything was messed up. So, 
Who knows? <laughs> Whatever. Everything's running good. We got air brakes. We got all that stuff. Apparently, we don't really need this all the way up all the time either. I don't know. I just have always kind of cranked it up to max. Probably don't need that. Uh, we are just going to pound it on the way up this hill. I know some of these turns are definitely too sharp. And who knows how this is actually going to work. We haven't really brought anything loaded up out of this yet. So I'm hoping that the Class 70 still works. But it never used to bog down like it is right now. So... Let's see. Check and make sure we don't have any brakes on anything. Not like we've never left those on before. So, should be good. Brake wise, switches should all take care of themselves. We're headed back on a loop from which, which we came. So, we shouldn't have to worry about it too much there. Um, as you can see, you get away from the locomotives and things are much quieter. Back here, taking in the sound of the rail. Just chugging off in the day. Yeah, I guess we could just start throwing loads overboard. That was funny. Ooh. Watch that jumpy jumpy. Here we go, here we are, chugging up by the uh, smelter, but these loads are not light. I don't know if I can actually get one to highlight now and tell me how heavy it is. I know the, uh, the iron loads are not light. They are not by any means the heaviest. There we go, whatever. So, just about 10,000 pounds looks like. And uh, that's, I'm pretty sure that's just the load. So, we, uh, you know, we have a fair bit of weight. And this is definitely a 3% windy grade on the way up out of the valley. Um, but as you can see, the Class 70 is dealing with it as always. I mean, that's the thing with the Class 70, real workhorse why we did this for this load um, just was not worth messing around with anything else as you can see the locomotives definitely bogging down a lot so you know nothing else is probably doing this load though I did notice in buying the locomotive today that like you know the class 70 our big beauty of a workhorse you know it's like tier 5 or something to buy it and I don't know, I think I'm at like tier, what, level 9? Almost to go to 10. So it's like, you know, we need some bigger stuff on the big end for those who have been playing for a while. That's just the, uh, that's the truth. Uh, at least the way I see it. That'll give new people something to aspire to go after and... People who have been playing something nice and new. We've gotten a lot of new, nice little locomotives, which are awesome. But we need, you know, I think the community would love, at least those of us who have been playing for a while, want a real true powerhouse. Something that can, you know, do 20 of these, not 10 of these. Um, would be great to see some of the true heavy, heavy hitters on the three-foot rail. I know I, for one, am definitely in the power hungry group. Um, you know, looks are great, and the speed is awesome. Um, but then we all know that our speed, you know, is all pretty much currently capped. So, you know, with few exceptions, obviously the Shea is slower than everything else. But it would be nice to actually see the power go up for something. Big fat cat locomotives is what we need, right? That's what my boat's on. More power. Come on. 
Mr. Carnegie. You better make it, man. Or this ain't gonna go good. I know we still have one hefty turn. It definitely takes a pop out of the locomotive. So hopefully we're not creeping down too much here. The, this load is definitely all it's got. I'll say that. This is a class 70 being stretched out. So hopefully we can gain just a little bit of speed here with a flat enough to actually get around this final turn. Uh-oh. And then what about our wood? This could be a wood problem. This is not a wood problem. Okay. So now we're just going to have to hold on and hope that it is going to make it around this final turn. Seems like it's picking up a little bit, which should hopefully be enough to get us around. This turn right there is actually the steepest little part because I needed it to hook up to the old rail, so... The work is not done until we come out to the flat. Once we hit this switch, we're all smooth sailing anyway. I mean, already we've made it. We're not going to die off, but we hit this switch. At least I don't think so. Of course, as I say that, watch it. Make it to that switch, and then we're on cruise control. That's for sure. There we go. She'll start picking up now for sure. There's no two ways about it. There we go. Sweet. Made it up the hill. That was the good pull. Let the whistle ring out through the valley. And now it'll accelerate up. Nice long train. Still probably not a great payday. I don't think these things pay very well. I guess we'll take a look when we get out there, but I know that's why like we've stepped up all these to ten cars, because when you aren't, you know, it's petty cash. Um, when you're just running a few of these, that's for sure. And after all, we in the freight business to move freight. And I don't think they make so much money running little loads. Bigger is better in this here business. That's how I always looked at it. Not a bad looking load. A few too many stakes. I would like to see these things, you know, reduced. And maybe that's totally historically accurate that they have five stakes down each side. But, like, I mean, all right, cool. But we could get away with three. I mean, it, uh, you know, it looks like we're pulling a porcupine down the... I don't know. We could have a few less stakes. That wouldn't be sad. I'll just say that. doesn't really matter which way we go everything will wrap us back around probably should have gone the other way would have been a better run probably but that rail and this rail both just go into either end of the smelter and now with the way I have it set up um, we can actually go in and out of any end it's actually really convenient. I mean, I haven't had any like, oh, I gotta even remotely think about trying to turn around a locomotive or anything like that, because it just doesn't really matter. You can come into this thing any way you want and get out any which way you want, pretty much. Except going out to the logging camp. If you want to do that, you actually have to be on this spur over here. Although that's not totally true either, because you could go out there this way. So... It's actually completely universal, this hub, now that I'm thinking about it. You can pretty much go wherever you want. So it does make for a nice center hub. Definitely not a lot of room out here if I was trying to put in a yard or something to make it like the main central spoke. But it is, um, it's great for running loads out of. You gotta take the wood, you know, wood's gotta go everywhere, right? So... 
just about everywhere needs wood of some sort or another or it has to come in from there or out from there it's this is kind of a central hub at least that's how I look at it guess everybody runs it different but I guess I always looked at it like this is kind of the route the center route everything hubs off of here <clears throat> so we have other you know we have locomotives at almost all the other destinations except here and the smelter coal mine I believe is currently not um, locoed out if you will but uh, I want to those are the next two locomotives I'd like to build I just have kind of been hoping we'd get a little more power um, or some other kind of locomotive a new big stronger locomotive that I can actually stick out there for stuff was kind of more of the idea it's either way it's 10 cars wood that gotta go up there which you know this one can now do that I don't know may re may refit um, woody I'm not exactly sure may just turn this one more into the into the spike car hauler for everything else um, other than the coal mine because we already have a Isler with uh, spikes for that so but that's such a long run out there that I don't know I like to just keep things separate for out there I kind of want to do the same thing for the mine for the coal mine or the iron mine excuse me that way both mines are kind of outrigged with their own locomotives but I kind of want a new locomotive something cool out there that's actually going to be able to get the job done that's the thing only locomotives we don't currently have out are the climaxes those are parked in the shed we did put both of those in the shed and um, I still haven't hooked the shed up to the line at all um, so they're staying in there for a while. That's for sure. I said I'm not running those until that whole breaking spinning wheels thing is is sorted out. So, you know, using the class 70 is just easier. Quite honestly, they haul huge amounts of wood. This tra this loco, it just does everything really easy. And it does it all well. It doesn't matter what you're doing. That's my biggest problem, I think, with the Class 70, is that, to be honest, it does everything well. So, you know, you know one could make the excuse of just using a Class 70 for absolutely everything and just having uh, rolling stock parked out in places or, you know, one could justify buying a Class 70 for absolutely everything on the rail. Not that you need it, but, you know, it's whatever you're doing it with. The Class 70 is probably better at it. Probably has to stop for wood and water less. And probably will have less problems pulling things, derailing, or anything else. That's just kind of the truth with the Class 70. This thing, uh, the only problem I've ever run into with the Class 70 is when the crossovers were broken. Or the crossing tracks, whatever you want to call them, you know. At that point, uh, the Class 70 was not worth a heck of a lot if your track, you know, had one of those in it, that's for sure. I know I got away from using them because of that. Otherwise, I just prefer the Class 70. It's just a nice, smooth ride for just about everything. Uh-oh. We're running out of wood. Wood. There we go. Another 50% in the old box should do it. Ah, we on fire. No, just kidding. A little steam leak. No big deal. Let's 
like we're just gonna head out on this trail. Give us a chance to run by Eureka and I don't know, what do we got? Eureka oh, Eureka and Glenbrook probably sitting over there. That's kind of funny. The real life combo parked off on the edge. Here they come into view now. Still haven't brought Glenn out. I'm gonna have to put I wanna put a siding in or something out there for Glenn. Um, back out there and then now we brought in the Eureka from this car or this train and uh, parked it over there that's Woody so I suppose we could probably honestly just delete Woody and keep uh, keep this one on the trip on this rolling stock it uh, would be far more efficient at the end of the day but I do like trying to use the Eurekas for multiple things. Especially when you can actually pull a fair amount of cars with it. It's just kind of fun. Just a good looking loco over there. Glenn and Eureka both. With a little caboose. It's kind of cool actual shot there. Almost looking like an actual train depot area thing or something. I don't know. Not sure. I'd like to do more in this area. I'm just not exactly sure what or how. Yeah, that's the thing. The more you look at your rail, you can always find something you want to add. And see, coming up here, you'll see this is the stuff we laid really tight. Um, tight twin rail. And we kind of extended that now as we fixed it. Not that it's super tight together, but we did extend the much better looking double rail. Got rid of the silly little house. Looks good like this, I think. I like it pretty good. Not sure I would want to do the whole track like that. I don't know, just from a game performance standpoint in the idea that maybe, you know, one day when everything's running perfectly smooth, I could really see doubling up the track, but I kind of keep it, try to keep it down so you're not laying tons and tons. It's the same argument I have with putting in like a... Uh, you know a yard is that it's just more track that I don't know you know when game performance is better I think that that becomes more of a thing until then I don't know I'm still thinking about going back like I say to start a new save file and see how performance runs on something new um, maybe it's the same maybe it's not I hear a lot of people from a lot of people that it's same kind of performance whether they do or don't have, the, um, you know, all the rails set up and finished. So, you know, who knows? You get to play it in your world so long that, like, you don't really know what's different anymore. With, like, new, you know, new bugs or is it old bugs or what, I guess is my point. So as you can see here, this is where it used to go way wonky out here. We straightened that out, moved it much closer. Not quite the same arc in it, but it's a much straighter rail. The rail's getting straighter. This was straight, now this is straight. This could actually come over a little bit and be straighter when you really look at it. So um, I think they're close enough together and straight enough that that's probably going to do it. I don't think we'll be moving this section again. But I am happy that we relayed it because it looks better. For sure. Which, you know, out here, this stuff is so flat and devoid. I kind of like having the dual rail. And quite honest, this is a long run that um, <clears throat> it's nice for you to not have to run out on the same rail, I guess. Much needed iron, that's for sure. 
This was so needed up here, it's not even funny. I've been needing it, been needing it, been needing it. And I just, it's been getting higher and higher on the priority list, I guess, has been the thing until we finally need it, need it. Like, we're just stopped out here. And, you know, you can always run one side or the other of your rail. And I talked about that in past videos, how you kind of have the wood side and then you have everything from after the mines. And that's just kind of how it goes. And so it's like, which end of the game do you run on? Because, quite frankly, it's a lot of loads one way or another. And uh, they are not all short. You know, this one's not a short load by the time you pick up the train and run it down there. If we were at, you know, the industry down there, it'd be a different story. But then at least we weren't all the way out at the ironworks when I started this video either. I would already brought the locomotive in from out there. So just one run, you know, can take you a fair bit of time. Once you get going, people complain necessarily that like, ooh, lay that track took me over an hour. And it's like, yeah, but wait till you start running our load and it takes you, you know, 30, 40 minutes or something one way. That's, um, uh, because that's, that's the inevitable truth unless you find some short routes. Some of these routes are pretty long. And definitely take a fair amount of time to run. Then you add in the um, individual, or if you're playing solo, you know, like the slow, solo loading method. And um, you can definitely get into a fair amount of time just on one load. Such as the life of a solo rail rotor. Not sure if I've noticed any kind of difference having this compressor not at 100 or versus being at 100. I don't know if that would help the performance of the locomotive or just um, lessen your brakes the more you start to use them. Oh yeah, see there, the air pressure actually went down. I'm cranking that back up. I don't need the brakes to go out on me right now. That's not what I need. I need to get to the dock. I always do that. Hit the gas. Hit the brake. Alright. Brake. See if we can get this thing anywhere near to a speed. Or it'll just chill. And drop the load off. If it stays like that, that's not going to be too bad. We could probably work with that. We don't want to drop a lot of these. I'll try to throw this up. So if you're interested in how much, how much it uh, pays, twenty-nine thousand one is what we're at. I think they'll hit the dock if I drop them here. Go. Okay, we don't need to be that pushy. They did hit the dock, though. Alright, cool. We're good. So we'll just drop from here. See, they don't pay very well. I mean, it's like, they're like $100 or something. Per car. Which is like, you know, Lamo juice. Train starting to speed up now. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, that's pretty lame. I mean, that's a half a train and we're like a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, like, what are they, 25 a piece? Is that what they are? Oh, that is what they are. 25 a piece. So, like, 75, oh, my. 75 bucks a car. So, even with 10 cars, you're only making 750 doing this. Look at how fast they're starting to go now, boy. We're getting them all dropped off, though, so this is working. It's almost like we, we've done this a time or two. All right. 
dollars for 10 cars. Wow. Wow, that should be a much shorter run. <laughs> Whatever, so uh, there's that. I guess we will jump in here. We just figured out 700 and... 750 dollars for 10 cars of loaded beams not exactly sure what that did for the stock try to run down here and see if we can see, check on some numbers see how some things are going looks like we have about a third of the coal left and nine oh i suppose because it's making stuff right away great nine of a hundred and we drop off three thirty at a time so three loads three more loads and we'll have that filled up at least we're making some steel pipe so that's good we're back in business good 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 did get rid of some of the boxes so that was fun and uh there you go there's uh, at least putting some iron to the works if you know what I mean. So thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you get a chance, like, share, subscribe. Subscriptions are free, but they sure do help the channel. Y'all have a great day.